Are you a buyer trying to decide if an FHA loan is best for you? You're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to talk about the FHA loan specifically, the pros, the cons, who it's right for, who it might not be right for, what you want to know about an FHA loan, and why FHA loans are making a comeback. All right, Matt, the mortgage guy, residential mortgage broker, licensed across the U.S. If you want to connect with me and my team, go to greatmortgagebroker.com, fill out the form. We're more than happy to help. If you need an agent, no matter where you're at in the country, go to homeandmoney.com forward slash Matt. In today's video, I'm talking FHA loans. In 2023 and beyond, the FHA loan is going to gain in popularity because it's a loan that really fits for a lot of buyers. And in 2020 and 2021, when people had to offer 100,000 above ask, um, when it was super, super competitive, these FHA buyers got squeezed out, unfortunately. A lot of first-time buyers utilize the FHA loan. This is a great loan product for people that have any sort of credit challenges. So it is a good thing that the FHA loan is making a comeback. And so in this video, I'd like to talk to you to help you decide if an FHA loan is right for you. Just some generalities, right? Like whether an FHA loan is right for you is going to depend on your specific situation, your credit score, your down payment, and things like that. According to the CFPB, um, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, for borrowers with fair or poor credit scores or less money for a down payment, FHA loans are normally less expensive than conventional loans. I can back up that statement from the CFPB and say for sure, not only are they less expensive, but they're also going to come with better terms because you're going to pay higher mortgage insurance and a higher rate on those conventional loans. The conventional loans are very credit sensitive in what it does to the pricing, right? Because the worst credit score you have, the worst pricing gets on a conventional loan, the worst credit score you have, the higher mortgage insurance premium you pay. So I can definitely attest to that. Uh, lower credit score, lower down payment, it's going to be less expensive to get an FHA loan. If you have 10% or more down, if you have perfect credit, that conventional loan is probably going to be less expensive for you, right? So if you're considering an FHA loan, make sure that you put those side by side and not only have a lender tell you, yes, FHA, yes, conventional, but show you why. If any client ever asks me why, I'm happy to present it side by side with three and a half percent down FHA versus the three percent down conventional. Here's what it's going to look like down payment wise and on a monthly basis. And on this side, it's going to look like this. So clearly, as you can see, it's $275 a month cheaper and it's X less out of pocket, whatever the case may be. You can look at them side by side, right? So FHA has its minimum standards, but each lender is going to be, um, you know, perhaps setting overlays where just because FHA says you can go down to 500 credit score doesn't mean every lender does that. So I'm going to go into FHA loan requirements just so you know what the what the requirements are from FHA. Like I said, FHA will go down to a 500 score between 500 and 579 credit score. You've got to put 10% down to do an FHA loan. If you have at least a 580 you can put three and a half percent down. And this is the most common way to structure an FHA loan is 3.5% down. And on every single FHA loan you get, there's mortgage insurance required. Even if you put 30% down, you still pay mortgage insurance. In the end of the video, I'm going to share something cool about mortgage insurance. So stay tuned because there may be a surprise coming in 2023 when it comes to FHA and mortgage insurance. Debt to income ratios on FHA loans are pretty flexible. You can go up to a 47%, 46.99 on the front end, up to 56.99 on the back end. Front end and back end simply mean front end mortgage payment only versus your gross income. And that's your front end ratio. The back end ratio is mortgage payment plus car payment plus student loans, all your debts combined versus your gross income. That's your back end ratio. And to give you an example, because examples help you understand it, if I'm trying to get below 47 and 57, if my gross income is 
I need to be under 4,700 in mortgage payment, under 5,700 in total debts. Now, I don't recommend you run out there and get a $4,700 a month mortgage payment, but that's how they qualify it, right? Okay, must be your primary residence. This is important. FHA loan can't be an investment property. You must live there. You sign something stating, I intend to occupy this property for the next 12 months. Here's an important thing to remember. You can buy with an FHA loan. You can occupy it as your primary residence. If you ever move out and turn it into a rental, no harm, no foul. Loan stays in place. You still get those great loan terms. You're still able to leverage 96.5%, put down 3.5%. That all stays intact. You just... When you buy it, it needs to be your primary. You need to move into it as a primary. I've got a past video if you want to look it up about exceptions to more than one FHA loan because this is another thing people get caught up on. You buy it as your primary. You're looking to use FHA again. You can, but only when there's an exception. So look up my other video. Talks about moving over 100 miles and change in family size and the other ways that you can get yourself more than one FHA loan. While we're talking about FHA, while we're talking about 2023 and all the clients can be able to utilize this in 2023, let's talk about the increased loan limits in 2023 for FHA. With FHA, they basically take 65% of the conforming loan limits and that's what the FHA limit is going to be. So if you look at 726,200, which is the new limit that just came out and you multiply it by 65%, you get 472 and 30, $472,030 is going to be the loan limit on FHA in over 3,000 counties across the USA. There's going to be some counties where it's higher and some counties where it's just this 472 limit. Look up your specific county. Only 12 counties stayed unchanged. None of them went down. Loan limits don't go down. They either stay the same or they go up. So over 3,000 counties went up, 12 remain the same, um, starting at 472 and 30 and up from there. The two units started about 604,000, the three units start at 730,000, and the four units start at 907, 900 and up, right? And I say and up because certain counties, it's going to be higher, but just um, keep in mind, there's more uh, buying power, keeping it FHA and and a room before you get into those jumbo areas. Okay, so two things I want to talk about which are huge pros for FHA loans. The biggest pro for most people is there's more flexible qualifying. I already talked about how you can go down to 500 credit score. It's forgiving with people who have less than stellar credit. It's forgiving when you plug it into an automated underwriting system, certain debt ratios and certain credit events are going to tell the underwriting system no on a conventional loan. Can't do this loan. And it's done, right? FHA is going to say yes more than conventional automated systems will. Also, Chapter 13 bankruptcy, FHA will consider approving a borrower who's still paying on a Chapter 13 if they've satisfactorily made at least 12 payments, right? We got to get uh, an approval from the court's trustee. You have to give an explanation about the bankruptcy and you know that you've established um, reestablish good credit, you financially, you're in a good place and you've got good job stability, all that stuff, but it's possible. Chapter seven bankruptcy, you only have to be two years out of that since the discharge date, not the filing date, the discharge date, and you can get an FHA loan, right? Um, you have to, you know, provide a full explanation about how you've reestablished credit. You're in good financial, um, situation and you know you got a stable job and all that stuff but these waiting periods are a lot shorter than if you're going out there and trying to get a conventional loan where you got to wait four plus years before conventional will lend on you right uh, a con or something to consider with fha loans they are government-backed loans so with government-backed loans if you've got federal debt fha doesn't like it right if you are delinquent on federal debt tax liens student loans you're not going to be eligible um, for an FHA loan. They are, um, you know, going to want you to pay off judgments prior to closing and things of that nature. So that's something to remember. Back to a huge pro for FHA loans. One of my favorite pros for real estate investors across the country, multi-unit purchases. Remember, 
It's got to be owner occupied. So you got to live in it, but you can use the same 3.5% down and buy multifamily, two unit, three unit, four unit, meaning go out there, find a triplex in your area that's selling for 300,000. I'm thinking there's some somewhere in this country that sell at that three and a half percent down 10,500 might be some closing costs. You might be able to get seller credit, pay for those closing costs. You are now the proud owner of a three unit complex. You live in one unit, you rent out the other two. Ideally, these other two pay you rents that cover most of that mortgage. Now you're free rolling, you're living for free. That's a really cool part um, about an FHA loan and a lot of people who buy triplexes and fourplexes to do that. I've got videos out there on the self-sustainability rule. Read on that. If you're buying a three or four unit, you got to make sure it passes that. I've got a video on it, so I won't go into detail here, but know that you can use it for multifamily purchases. So all in all, it's going to be a great year for FHA loans in 2023. And the cherry on the top is that I'm hearing from multiple sources, the 0.85 that is charged for mortgage insurance on FHA loans on their monthly mortgage insurance premium is more than likely to go down soon. FHA has been collecting this for years and years and years on loans that have performed, performed, performed. So they've got a bunch of reserves in this account. They don't need to keep collecting that big of a premium. Will it go down to 0.65? Will it go down to 0.5? Will it go down even lower? I don't know. But I do know that first-time home buyers utilize FHA quite a bit. I know that this mortgage insurance premium being cut in half would be a huge, huge thing for first-time home buyers, lowering their monthly payment, increasing what they're able to qualify for, and helping more first-time buyers get into homes. So let's hope that that happens. It's not guaranteed, but I'm hearing from more and more sources, so I think it's coming. Stay tuned. I'm going to have more videos on more products and more things to look out for in 2023. Check out the other videos. 